All right, we're going to continue in the interest of time. Now, the interesting thing is, obviously, I've known Matt for 25 years, and he's been vagabonding it internationally for quite a few, and I've got pages and notes. I've read 4-Hour Workweek like three times, and I've still got pages and notes, because it's different to read about it than it is to watch a presentation of someone who's actually doing it. Now, not that Tim Ferriss wasn't doing it, but someone that you can just say, hey, I got a quick question. So thank you for coming. That was absolutely awesome. I love that. I got a ton of, that was worth me coming. <laughs> All right, so one of the other things that we try and do is keep you on the cutting edge of what's going on in the world of marketing and growing sales for your business. So a whole lot has changed in 2015. Um, any of you who are marketing on Facebook in any way, shape, or form know that Facebook has changed their terms of service almost, I don't know, every couple of weeks. And you can, we have had clients who were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on Facebook ads and had their accounts banned. Where Facebook says, we don't want your money anymore, sorry. Last year, what would happen is you would get an ad that was disapproved, you'd get an email, sorry, your ad has been disapproved. Then you'd get another email with another ad that was, you'd usually get three, you'd have a couple ads disapproved, then they'd say, you're in danger of violating our terms of service, please stop or we'll have to shut you down. You get like five warnings, five strikes before they kicked you out. Now, you get no warning whatsoever, they don't even disapprove your ads, they just say, we don't want your money anymore. So it's made our jobs really interesting on the Facebook side, trying to keep up with what they do, what money they will take and what money they won't take. So we're gonna share, I'm gonna share with you what's working right now, what you can get away with. And then we'll talk about if we've got time, um, some really cool stuff that we're doing on YouTube that's getting really great results. All right, so try and stay with me. Uh, so these are some of our best performing ads for some of our clients. Now this is, uh, this was advertising what we call lead generation magnet, ebook, free report, whatever you want to call it, uh, called Put Your Best Foot Forward, How to Overcome the Top Seven Mistakes That Can Prolong the Pain of Plantar Fasciitis. So this is a chain of uh, podiatry, like foot clinics. And these three happen to be in the UK. They happen to be in, Ireland, uh, in the UK. So what we're advertising is the ebook, and we've done a whole bunch of different versions of this ad with different images on the cover. The interesting thing is, this is our best performing ad that is still allowed on Facebook. So we had a much better performing ad where the cost for an ebook sign up, like name, email, cell phone number, they punch it in and then say that they want it, was a lot cheaper. It had pictures in the feet of screaming faces. So the feet were screaming faces. And the click through rate and the opt in rate was incredible. But Facebook shut it down because it was a too like, grotesque image, which is why it worked. Because you see screaming feet staring at you, you say, what the heck is that? Uh, so plantar fasciitis, keeping you off your feet, free guide helps you avoid painful mistakes, free foot pain guide, millions of people suffer the pain. While they may think they're getting help, they're actually making it worse. This valuable consumer guide explains how to avoid painful mistakes. So we're offering a substantive piece of content, something value added. So that if the person downloads this and doesn't go to the clinic, they still will learn something. They will feel like they got what they wanted. They will be educated and they will say, okay, I learned something about how to make my plantar fasciitis feel better. Because Facebook, much to my chagrin, in the last year, you can't see it in this, but there is now a little button at the top of every ad you run where a person can click it and say, this ad is spam. This ad is not relevant to me. And if you get too many people clicking, Facebook will ban you. Or Facebook will jack up your prices if they allow you to stay. So now as a consumer, please don't do this to any ads you see because they might be ours. You have the power where you could take a company that's literally spending millions of dollars and shut them off. Unless of course they're your competition, then go right ahead. <laughs> because you can now say this ad is, if you know it's an ad, because a lot of consumers still don't realize because the sponsored word is tiny. Facebook still has some brains left. They want people to click because they, the only, Facebook's an ad agency. They're not a social network. They make no money off of the billions of people signed up. They only make money if you click on ads and we as advertisers pay for them. Does that make sense? So don't click the spam button because it might be someone you know. <laughs> All right, this is country sweet sauce. Cooking sauce, barbecue sauce. They would tell me to call it a cooking sauce. It's, it's not a barbecue sauce, it's a cooking sauce. You can buy them in Wegmans. Um, they are local, they are in Rochester. And this was a cost per click ad that literally 12 cents a click, which is one of our cheapest cost per click. 
So we are, they are, we are driving, I think like four or 5,000 people a month to the website we built for Country Suite. So it's working incredibly well and incredibly cheaply. Um, now this is, not, it just says get your, you know, Country Suite is America's best cooking sauce, which of course, there's no way to judge that, so we can say it. America itself does not vote, so we're safe. Use it on salads, side dishes, from Asian to home style. It's the most versatile cooking sauce you'll find. Get your bottle today. Shop now. So what is the cooking sauce in that barbecue sauce? Bruce, you wrote the copy. Not sauce. It's technically not barbecue sauce. They do have one now. They, since we kept calling it barbecue sauce, they decided to invent a barbecue sauce. Use it recipes, use it in the marinade. Yes. Use it, in the it is more versatile. It's extremely versatile. Yeah, it's really good. Yes. No, that was not a Facebook issue. That was the client going, no, it's not barbecue sauce. And I'm like, it tastes a lot like barbecue sauce. But I'll look. And they're like, it's not. I'm like, fine, it's cooking sauce. But we are advertising, we are running this ad in front of people who are buying barbecue sauce, who are buying this. So even barbecue sauce lovers love cooking sauce. Maybe that's our next ad. I don't know. But you'll also see that it got 482 people share, commenting on it, sharing it saying, I want, so people can share your ads, not just your posts, but your ads. So if you see an ad on your newsfeed that you like, you can share it and everyone else on your newsfeed will now, that ad will rerun in front of all your friends. It's like saying, hey, this movie's good, you should go see it. So please share ads. Uh, this is Chicken Pizza Works, another local client, John Fortini, who couldn't be here today. So we were getting, they have a birthday club where you sign up and then the month of your birthday, you get like a free pizza which is a great idea. So we built that, for, that was you had to sign up on their website. What we did was we built a mobile text message platform for it. So you text the phone number with your name, address, and month of your birthday, and then we'll mail you the coupon, 50% off any cheese and white, white, one item pizza during your birthday. So if you go online, that's the coupon code to punch it in, or you can just text in. And we were getting people to, it shouldn't say cost per click, it should cost per sign up. We were getting people to sign up for like 20 cents. So he's getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birthday members that he's got name, phone number, email, address, physical snail mail address in the month of their birthday. So they may not just buy one pizza. They're now on his customer list that he can promote to anytime he wants. Like he says, guess the score, of the, send out a text. We have taught him how to now send out text messages with the, our service because he would text me and go, do something for the Bills game. Say, whoever gets the score right gets a giant pizza for free. And everyone has to text it in or post it on Facebook. So he was like, I want to do this like every week and I don't want to call you all the time. So Victoria was nice enough to teach him how to use our texting program. Uh, this is Karuba Collision. Um, we run marketing for all of the Karuba Collision stores that are owned by Joe, because there's stores that are not owned by Joe. And this was, does your car have the winter blues? Obviously not, we, this is an older ad. Get a free estimate from Karuba Collision. Spring has sprung. Contact us today for a free estimate. Get your car ready for spring. And we were driving clicks to their website to sign up for an estimate of repairs or repair shop for 70 cents. Yeah. So are all your uh, clients like that um, all using the Yes, because we make them. So you asked the CRM question, which Matt answered. I brainwashed Matt into using Infusionsoft. And we do it for all of our clients as well. It's the leading software for small business marketing automation. Yes. Um, John, the text messaging program for John isn't in Infusionsoft, it's in something called Instant Customer, um, which if you want, I can get you a sub account for. Um, we used Instant Customer because when we started this, this wasn't the first ad we ever did for John. We started with him years ago. Infusionsoft didn't have text messaging capability back then. Now it does. Instant Customer is a whole lot easier. It's more user friendly. He can literally sign in and, and, and he'll be the first to tell you he's not a techie guy and in a couple minutes, send out a text. In Infusion, it's a lot trickier than that. Um, this is Innovative Hearing Solutions. They are a chain right now of four hearing aid clinics in Canada. Again, we're advertising a lead generation magnet, how to avoid the top seven mistakes people make when getting hearing aids. Now hear this. Um, so we were driving people to go, again, sign up for a free report on, which of course tells them 
these are the mistakes most people make when buying hearing aids. And of course, we're the only possible solution. The only place you could go and avoid all these mistakes is us. When you are writing your lead generation magnets, you want to make it so that you set the buying criteria. You tell them the questions to ask your competition or whoever else, so that that way you skew the questions in such a way that you're the only company that can answer them all the right way. So if they actually go take the list of questions in, every other place is going to look bad. And they're going to go, oh, well, I guess I've got to go back to this place anyway. It's your piece. You get to write it however you want. Upper Grove Financial Group, they are financial advisors. Um, they specialize in working with teachers. So this is a free retirement report. Are you ready for life after teaching? Seven biggest mistakes teachers make when with their retirement accounts. And we were running this ad in front of teachers who were within 10 years of retirement by age. We're making X amount of money, because you can see that in the US on Facebook, and a number of other factors. Geography, we wanted them in the states that they were licensed in. And we were getting people to their site for 45 cents to go get the report. So you'll see offering something that Facebook sees has value a lot of times helps you stay safe on Facebook. This is a dentist, um, Sand Lake Center for Advanced Dentistry in Orlando. And we were giving, in this case, it was a coupon, $1,250 off Invisalign. It's about 20% because it's normally $5,000. This is what's called an offer claim ad. An offer claim ad, oh, it got cut off, would have a little button saying claim offer. And you would click the button and then Facebook would email it to you and say, here is your coupon, you know, print this out and take this in. The coupon doesn't have to be for a discount. It could be for a free consultation. It could be for whatever you can manufacture an offer to be, to attend an event, come to a workshop, et cetera, et cetera. Free exam and x-ray, free windows assessment, whatever it is. So in this case, we had, yeah, it was $2 per person, $2.14 a person who signed up for it, and 138 people signed up. Now, the good and the bad news is not all 138 people actually showed up and became patients. So if you're running offer claims ads on Facebook, 100% of the people aren't going to do what they said they were going to do. Surprise, surprise. She couldn't have handled 138 new patients any, in one month anyway. Um, so the trick is trying to, one of the things we do on offer claim ads to make them work, because Facebook won't tell you who claims your offer. They will not say, here's the list of all the people. So we will tell them when Facebook sends the email, here's your coupon, we won't send the coupon. We will say you have to go to this website to go get the coupon. The website just happens to have an Infusionsoft form to get your coupon that you have to fill out, so they have to give us contact information. Because otherwise, you could spend, she could, you could spend a ton of money and Facebook won't tell you, and if they don't remember to print it out and bring it in, you got no way of knowing what happened. So when in doubt, you always want to get contact information from people so that you have a way to follow up with them if they don't remember to do what they're supposed to. So rather than the coupon, you send them this thing. It's like a, it says, go here to get your coupon. Okay. Yes. Because otherwise, we found when we did it the other way, a much lower percentage of people actually showed up. Because some of them don't realize what they're, they just say, oh, that looks good, and they hit it, but they don't realize what they're doing. They think they're liking it, or they don't know that they're signing up for something they don't know that they're actually, they don't read it to follow the directions. So you have to make it as impossible for them to flake out as you can. And part of that is getting information so you can either email them or pick up the phone and go, hey, you signed up for this. When would you like to schedule your Invisalign treatment? Or whatever it's called. Uh, this is John again, but instead of selling birthday club memberships to get a free pizza on, a half a, off on your pizza, this was his catering business. So he said, wow, this pizza, you know, the birthday club is working, getting people to enter contests, like what's the score of the Sabres game going to be is working. I'd like to do higher ticket items, you know, more than $10, $20 pizza. I said, okay, what do you got that sells for more than pizza? And he said, well, I do catering. I said, okay, what's your average catering job size? He said, 300 bucks. I said, that's better than one pizza. I said, okay, do you have a bribe we can give people to get them to tell you they're interested in catering. And he said, well, anybody who does it, we give them a free veggie platter. And this is a picture with the giant veggie platter. That was the deal, the promotion. I said, okay, let's make them text in saying they're interested in a catering buffet package. 
So this one, they had to text veg50 to this number, and then when they got their catering package, they would get their free veggie platter on top of whatever they ordered, and we had 60 people sign up for a buck a pop. So a dollar to acquire someone interested in catering that might spend 300 is a good ROI. Every dollar you get, if I give you a dollar and you give me 300 back, I'll make that trade all day. I'll go borrow money to make that trade. Um, you can also run what are called event response ads on Facebook. So if you create a Facebook event, like a seminar or a workshop um, or a health screening or whatever it is, or a buying opportunity for real estate, you create an event on a Facebook page, you can then run event response ads. And what that means is the person clicks a button on Facebook and says, yes, I will attend this event. And you only pay for the people who say, yes, I'm coming. I'm coming to the seminar. I want to learn about real estate. I want to learn about financial planning. I want to learn about insurance. And this was Woods to Wedges, which is a local client at the Whirly Golf Dome. Um, and it custom, they custom make golf clubs for you with rocket science, NASA technology. So you're instantly a better golfer. And this was a manufacturer's demo day. Like the manufacturer's reps were bringing in the new clubs and were showing them off. So we had the first, this was the first one we ran for them and we had people sign up for a buck 32. Now you say, okay, I paid a dollar 32 to get the person in the door. If I can sell them a 300, 500 thousand dollar, a couple thousand dollar golf set, I'm making my money, but I'm doing good. Uh, the first ad we did, 12 people signed up. It was a very small event because they don't have a big facility. Um, we have since done bigger ones and we've done stuff with Gary, who's a member of our group where Gary is the featured golf pro who's going to be there. So you come hang out with Gary and see him work with you. Um, but what do they actually sign up for in terms of how does the registration thing work? If they want to go to this, they have to fill their information in somewhere so that you capture it? They don't. So they can just say, yes, I join. See the little button that got cut off, join event. Yep. They click that and then their info autumn, it is signed up for through Facebook. So you can see, you can go, you as the marketer can go to the event page and it'll say 522 people coming or 12 people coming and you can click and see the list. So you can see all the people who are attending the event, their Facebook account names. So I could then click on it, friend you, and then message you and say, hey, just reminding you that you signed up for this on Thursday at two o'clock. Here's okay, the link. So if it was not a live event, if it was a virtual event like a webinar, they would need to somehow get to the physical webinar registration so that they would right. be set up. So would you have to do this step two of messaging them, like here's the registration link? Or yes. You, go direct? Um, you would have to do step two. You can also put on the event page itself in Facebook, here's the sign up details, click this link to go register through webinar jams, and then they go fill out the form. Yes, good question. And then something that's working really, really well are video ads on Facebook. So Facebook got jealous of YouTube, which is the second largest search engine in the world and the biggest video distribution platform in the world. So Facebook decided to start offering video ads where you can run ads to get people to watch your video. So this is spiffy mobile car wash in detail. You no longer own a car, so you don't need this anymore. But it's an app that you would like because the app will schedule some, the, them to drive out, wash and detail your car wherever you are in their locate, like wherever in the city. So you can say, I'm at work, and they will drive out, wash, wax, detail your car, do whatever you want to it, make sure you come out, look at it, say, yes, I approve, you pay mobile, they drive away. So they're a mobile car detailing service. So this was the video about who has time to go to a car wash, let us do it. It's a doodle animated cartoon video. It's a couple minutes long. And um, we were getting, I mean, we had like 40,000 views at two cents a piece. Which if you went to channel two and said, I'd like to run a commercial and pay two cents, it wouldn't go so well. So given that video is working so well, let's talk about some really cool stuff you can do on advertising on YouTube. Everybody knows what YouTube is, yes? I shouldn't assume that, okay. So there are three different types, you wanna write these down, there are three different types of YouTube ads that you can run, depending on what you wanna do. The first one is called in search. So when you go to YouTube, and my kids live on YouTube, um, is you type in, you can type in in the top what you want to look for. So in this case, I typed in the word blog, and you'll see up shows how to make a blog, step-by-step step for beginners. 
So I can pay to have my video. So you see the top two, add, add, those little yellow things where it says add. I can make my video show up based on the search term of the person looking for it. So if you were Googling how to invest in real estate, com real estate you might want your videos to show up there. How to get PR for your business, um, buying a house or whatever it is, video conferencing, windows, how to fix my window. You shouldn't do it yourself. Here's why. You should hire us. So you can get your ad to show up based on what people search for. In display, so now I'm searching for blog. I'm on a blog video. On the right hand side is a whole bunch of suggested videos where Google says you should watch, YouTube says you should watch next. Notice it says ad. In this case, I'm not sure why he's advertising because the person searched for blog and this is 100% free, earn $367 daily, earn money online. Maybe he's advertising there because he's assuming anyone looking for blog wants to make money online. I personally would say blog is way too broad a search term to spend money advertising on because there's way too many people typing it in. But in display is like a suggested video. So I am constantly fighting with Lily, my two and a half year old, because she says I want to watch DCTC, which is the Disney car, Disney toy channel. It's reviews of toys. So she goes and sees, oh daddy, I want, buy me, buy me, buy me. <laughs> but the problem is suggested videos come up and two clicks later, she's watching something completely inappropriate that no two and a half year old should be watching. And I have to keep my ear open, because I can't hover over her all the time, because I have two other kids. But I have to keep my ear open going, wait a second, that does not sound like a toy, something you should be watching. And then she goes, no, give it back. And I'm like, stop clicking on the suggested videos. <laughs> videos. But as a dad, I do not want her clicking on suggested videos. So that's an in-display ad. In-stream ad, how many of you have been watching a video on YouTube, but before the video you wanted came up, there was something ahead of it? Yes. That's an in-stream ad. So you can put your video in front of anyone else's video. So do you have a competitor who's got videos on YouTube? Would you like your video to show up in front of theirs? So if someone's looking for them before they get to them, they have to watch you? Yes, say yes. Oh, well, of course, thank you. So that's an in-stream ad. So those are the three types of ads. Now let me share a little secret. There is an in-stream ad bonus. You only pay if they watch 30 seconds of your ad. So what if you purposely have the call to action for your ad earlier than 30 seconds? So for example, this is a plastic surgeon we're doing marketing for. So we put what's called an annotation where you can make like a little pop-up bubble in the ad that's clickable. So in this case, the free report we're advertising shows up in here. And if the person clicks it before the 30 seconds are up, I'm getting it for free. I'm not paying for it because they're clicking. You want them, they're paying to click on your ad. But if I make it so they click before the timer goes up, it doesn't cost me anything. I don't know if Google, if YouTube knows this is a loophole right now. And if it is, I don't know how long it's staying open for, but you might as well make money while you can. So in annotations you do right, which Kyle did a great job on, um, you can do right in the video when you upload it to YouTube. You can say, I would like annotations. Okay, what do you want your annotation to say? Click here for free report, click here for free estimate, click here for free whatever. What, where do you want it to appear? What second of the video do you want it to appear? Where do you want them to go if they click on your annotation? It costs nothing. It's a service YouTube is giving you for free. So put annotations throughout, not every second of your video, but I'd put it in like the first, let's say your video is two minutes long, I'd have it like in the first 10, the middle block, and then near the end. Because I, if I can, and especially if I'm doing an in-stream ad, if I can get them to click off my video and go to my website before the 30 seconds are up, I can get it for free. Who wants free advertising? Okay. Well, of course. All right, so who can you reach with YouTube? Lots of people, that's right. So, let's, so YouTube has done some really cool stuff this year in terms of targeting advertising because they want to make more money because they're owned by Google and they're greedy bastards. So what, can, what factors are there? Well, obviously you can pick what age the person is that you want to show up in front of. You can pick gender. You can pick what they're watching videos about. So there are tons and tons of categories. For example, you'll notice there are little plus signs that are drop-down menus next to each one of these. 
So games might be a category. And if I click plus, then there might be lots of different types of games down to the point where I could say I want video games. Do I want them playing on a platform? Do I want them playing on their phone? Do I want them playing online? I can get down to the fact I was just playing around and got down to the fact that if I wanted people playing, because my, my son plays, my, my eight-year-old is obsessed with Minecraft, I, got, I can run ads in front of people who are playing Minecraft. So you can target, I mean, these go way down the rabbit hole. Um, you can pick by topic. So I can say I want art and theater aficionados. I want auto, and again, there's all these drop-down menus. So cooking enthusiasts, you have a, ch like for example, there's a choice between do I want people who are interested in 30-minute meals, made famous by Rachel Ray, or do I want people involved in like more elaborate meals? So two different types of ads for best cooking for country suite. One going trying to make meals really fast, use this as a shortcut, and then one going looking for the perfect finishing touch to your gourmet masterpiece, use this. Um, here's something really, really cool. You can, YouTube serves ads all over the internet because they're owned by Google. So if you've ever been on someone's website or CNN or wherever and you see ads on that site, you can have your ad there. So you can specifically put in what websites you want to advertise on, like your competition or somebody else who does what you do, or something complementary to what you do. So you can say, here's a list of websites I'd like to advertise on, and YouTube will say, here are the sites that accept ads. These sites do not. So if it's joesbarbershop.com, he may not even know enough, know how to accept ads on his website. But CNN obviously does. Why would CNN run ads on their site? Because anytime someone clicks on it, they get paid and they make money. So you could run ads on your own website if you want. And, let pe let, and if you do choose to run ads on your own website, you get to choose who advertises on your site if you know what you're doing. Most of your competition does not know what they're doing. So if they've got ads on their website, they have no idea that they should be restricting you from advertising on their site. You can advertise in front of your competitors. You can also advertise in what's called a remarketing list. So a remarketing list is someone who has been to your website and then goes away. So let's say I go to your website and I do not opt in for your Maverick Investor Buying Group webinar opportunity. And then I go away. What happens is you can pl place a little piece of code on your website called a pixel. That pixel will fire when something happens. So you can specify that if someone goes to this page on your site and then goes away, that pixel tracks them all over the internet and follows them and places your ad back in front of them saying, hey, wait, come back. So we had an issue, Rebecca does not know this, my wife, but we had an issue with this for Father's Day because she went and bought my present online and so then the company was, that we do, is a client of ours, she did not know. So they were, pix they, my pixel followed her around the internet so then I saw retargeting ads that we created on my own home computer, and then she get, and I was like, I gotta pretend to be surprised. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been more of a surprise if I hadn't seen the retargeting pixel that I put following me around the internet saying, would you like to buy more of X? And I'm like, oh, I guess that's what I'm getting for Father's Day. <laughs> so it can backfire. But you can stalk people all over the internet. Um, you can upload a what, again, what search keywords you want your ad to show up on. And you have a choice. Your ad can be an ad for your video to get them to watch your video. Or it could be like literally like a text ad or a display ad. So you don't have to use YouTube to advertise a video. You can use it to advertise, get your free report here, click. Get your free pizza here, click, as opposed to a video saying, hey, go get your free pizza. So you can test which one works better and they might work better in different markets. Um, you can also, so when you upload a video to YouTube, you type in a description of what the video is about. And you type in what are called tags. What keywords do you want your video indexed for on YouTube? You can advertise based on what content keywords people have typed in when they uploaded their videos. So if I've got a video on home inspection, you can have an ad in front of me because my video has home inspection on it. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Now, YouTube has a really cool 
way of reporting how your ads work. They will tell you how many times your ad showed up, that's impressions, how many people saw it. They will tell you how many people, if you're doing a video ad, how many people watched it. They will tell you how many people clicked on it, what your cost per click was. They will tell you what percentage of your video people watched. Did they watch 25%, 50%, 75%? Did they make it through the whole thing? What was your cost per video view? What your click-through rate was? Did 1% of the people who watched your video click, on, click through to go to your website or did 20%? 20% obviously a lot better than one. And you can even put a little pixel from YouTube on your website and track conversion. So how many people specifically from YouTube video ad one opted in for my ebook versus how many people opted in from video ad two? So you can track and see which ads perform better in terms of generating actual results as opposed to just views and clicks. Those are good. People giving you contact information is better. Does that make sense? Yes. OK. So this is an example of what your YouTube dashboard would look like. I realize it's not big enough. Um, so this is video ad four. The video is called Fibromyalgia Hotline. We did this for a chiropractor. Um, so it was our, and it, and it got 444 impressions in the first day. 22 people actually watched the video. So that's 4.95% view rate. That's a 5% view rate. The average cost per view was eight cents. We spent $1.57 getting those 22 people to watch the video. And 38% watched 25 of it. 20% got halfway through, 13% watched 75% of it, and 10% got through the whole video. So I can say if everybody's falling off, maybe I need to make the rest of the second half of my video better. Or maybe I need to make it shorter. Who knows? Now considering that the ad was 31 seconds, I probably don't need to make it that short. This was us trying to game the YouTube system of it's, under, it's almost under 30 seconds, so theoretically we shouldn't have to pay for much of it because nobody's going to watch the whole, they didn't all get to the whole thing. So this is what, um, you get to pick a thumbnail, an image of what the ad looks like. So what I wanted, and this was another trick, is we create fibromyalgia pain, ruining your life, call this 800 number, free report. So even if they don't click on my ad or watch the video, they still see that screenshot. So we had people who didn't even watch the thing who called. Um, you have a choice. Do I want to drive views, awareness, or conversions? Or do I want to drive mobile app installs? Chiropractor does not have a mobile app, so we were not trying to advertise mobile app. In an in-stream ad, so I've got, that's what it's going to look like. They'll show you a preview of how it's going to show up. Remember, in-stream is before somebody else's video plays. Before your video plays, my video ad plays. So I have my URL where they're going. Do I want to generate auto-generate images from videos, or do I want to upload my own image? In this case, the image they picked was perfect. It was the screenshot of the 800 number. If it wasn't, I can upload my own image that I, my graphic designer creates and make the ad look however I want. Um, here's how it looked in display. Remember, that's as a suggested video. So I said, headline, fibromyalgia suffer, don't suffer from fibromyalgia, 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 hotline offers relief. That's my ad. And then they'll show you where it'll show up on YouTube search results, on YouTube related videos, as a U on partner websites, that's advertising on other people's sites. Because if you allow ads on your website, you are now a YouTube partner. You're in bed with YouTube. Um, then you can see demographics. So this is who saw it. So interestingly enough, the highest number, so I had zero people watch it who were 45 to 55, 54 years old. 65 plus, I had two people watch it. 55 to 64 was six people. So this day, 31% of the people who watched it were 55 to 64. So if that number holds true, I'm going to stop advertising in front of everybody else and only advertise in front of that age group because why waste money advertising to people who are not watching it? Then it, it will let you see which keywords got your ad to show up and how many people viewed it and how much of it did they view and what was your cost per view. So severe fibromyalgia had two views. They viewed 11% of my video. It cost me eight cents a person. But the keyword fibromyalgia pain, 157 people saw it, 
So I mean, I can see all these keywords that got zero, I'm going to get rid of. And it might also teach me where else I should be advertising on other, display, on other networks like Facebook or other places because I can see what the results are coming from. I can also see where, el where Google put my ad, because if I advertise on other people's websites, I can specify where it goes, or I can let Google make suggestions and put it everywhere and see what happens. So Google will give you the list of where it showed up. So for example, carpal tunnel repair surgery pre-op patient education. Uh, I got one person who watched it. Again, they had a small butt. This is like $10 a day. So not the most robust campaign, but it's a simple one, so I wanted to show it to you. So I spent eight cents on that. Um, how to massage sciatica pinform syndrome with explanations? I might want to stay there. Sciatica, you might also have fibromyalgia. But Inglés Americano Lexicon 31, I don't, your Spanish is a lot better than mine from living abroad. That one I'm probably, I got rid of. Hey, I don't even know what site that is. Um, Abigail and Brittany Hensel, the twins who share a body. We're not going to show up there anymore. So Google shows you everywhere, and you just see what happens. I don't think the, twins, the Siamese twins have fibromyalgia. When you have the total cost in the um, right-hand side, is that the cost per day or total for however long you ran the videos for? You get to specify the time frame in the reporting. So I can say, what did it do today? What did I do this week? What did it do this month? What did it do for two years? Okay. So this was this day. It was the first day the campaign was up. So Yes, so eight cents. So you'll see placement one, eight cents, placement two, nine cents, four cents, nine cents, three cents. Video ads are really cheap because Google has billions of views a day. It adds up and makes them tons of money. But for us, three cents, nine cents, seven, I mean, it's really, if you can, as long as you do it right and get them to actually take action, it's a really cheap way to acquire customers or leads. Does that make sense? Okay. So. Let's talk about, um, I'm gonna, this chair is attached to that plant. Um, we learned that earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up a couple chairs and we'll do some hot seats and Q&A. What we can do is we can talk about how this could apply to business. You can ask Matt more questions. You can ask me unrelated questions. This is your chance to say, here's what I'm working on in my business. Here's what I want, help. And we'll figure it out. 